Hello viewers, in this presentation we will discuss about the Instrument Landing System. The Instrument Landing System, ILS, is the International Civil Aviation Organization Standard, Non-Visual Aid to Final Approach and Landing. The, ILS, is defined as a precision runway approach aid which provides pilots with both vertical and horizontal guidance during an approach to land. The instrument landing system provides vertical and lateral guidance during approach and landing phase. It is used to enable safe landing during reduced visibility due to fog, rain, or snow. It assists auto land in the aircraft to provide guidance to the actual touchdown location on the runway. ILS consists of ground installations and airborne equipment. The main components of ILS are localizer glide path and marker beacons. Localizer is VHF, ILS component which provides horizontal guidance to the aircraft. Glide path is UHF, ILS component which provides vertical guidance to the aircraft. Marker beacons are VHF, ILS component which provides range information to the aircraft. NDB, and low power, DME, provides range information to the aircraft. There are two airborne equipments, which are localizer and glidepath antennas located on the aircraft nose. Marker beacon antennas located near tail of the aircraft. ILS, indicator display is inside the cockpit. ILS components, localizer. The primary component of the ILS is the localizer, which provides lateral course guidance. It can serve as part of an ILS approach in the case of localizer-only procedure. VOR and localizers share the same navigation radio and display equipment in the flight deck. The localizer transmitter operates on one of 40 Israeli New Shekels channels within the very high frequency band from 108 MHz to 112 MHz. Localizers use only odd tenths decimals, for example 108 decimal 1 and so on. Whereas, VOR, stations in this range use even tenths. For example, 108.0 or 110.4 MHz. Localizer provides course guidance within an angular width between 3 degree and 6 degree throughout the descent path to the runway threshold from a distance of 18 nautical mile from the antenna and up to 4,500 feet above the elevation of the antenna site. Distinct off-course indications are provided throughout the areas of the operational volume. These areas extend 10 degree either side of the course within a radius of 18 nautical mile from the antenna and 35 degree either side of the course within a radius of 10 nautical mile from the antenna. The course line along the extended center line of a runway, in the opposite direction to the approach direction served by the ILS is called back course. Back course are used for aligning with runway center line. The localizer transmits a Morse code ID that typically starts with an I, followed by a three-letter code. Identifying the station is done by listening to the Morse code over the navigation radio. The Morse code for Bangalore International Airport Localizer, IDVN, is ILS Component Localizer. The localizer antenna array is located at the departure end of the runway. It uses amplitude modulation to modulate two signals on the single VHF frequency, one at 90 Hz and the other at 150 Hz. These signals are emitted in a narrow pattern to each side, left and right, of the localizer centerline. The aircraft's navigation equipment interprets these 290 Hz and 150 Hz signals ratio and deflects the vertical course deviation indicator, CDI, needle accordingly. The aircraft receives the 150 Hz more strongly when on the right side. Pilot will follow the horizontal CDI needle thus will return to the center of localizer. 
both 90 and 150 Hz signals are at equal amplitude on the localizer's centerline. ILS, component, glide, path. The glide slope transmitter operates on one of 40, ILS, channels within the ultra-high frequency, UHF, band. The glide slope is normally usable to a distance of 10 nautical miles. The glide path provided by the glide slope transmitter is arranged so that it flares from 18 to 27 feet above the runway. The glide slope operates similar to a localizer but on a vertical plane. The glide slope two signals, one at 90 Hz and the other at 150 Hz are directionally transmitted above and below the desired approach path. The glide scope transmitter is located between 750 feet and 1250 feet from the approach end of the runway and offset between 250 feet and 650 feet from the runway center line. It transmits a glide path with a beam width of 1.4 degree. The glide path projection angle is normally adjusted to 3 degree above the horizontal plane so that it passes through the middle marker at about 200 feet and the outer marker at about 1400 feet. The aircraft glide slope equipment interprets both signals amplitude to display the aircraft's vertical location above or below the path. The CDI horizontal needle is below, the pilot will follow the needle and the aircraft will attain correct glide slope. The glide slope horizontal needle is in the middle. Aircraft is on correct vertical profile. The vertical localizer needle is in the middle. Aircraft is aligned with runway center line. The glide slope is subject to false signal errors. False glide slopes may be present above the desired path. These false signals are at a higher angle than it and may cause the pilot to fly a steeper approach than expected. To prevent following the wrong slope, Always intercept the glide slope from the published altitudes on the approach fixes. Localizer and glide slope carrier frequencies are paired so that the navigation radio automatically tunes the glide slope frequency which corresponds to the selected localizer frequency. The localizer signal is in the 108.1 MHz range while the corresponding glide slope signal is 334.7. Range, or distance, Information helps the pilot identify the aircraft's position on the instrument approach. You will find distance to altitude information in tabular form in the instrument approach charts. Marker beacons are the traditional means for range information. Each marker type implies a specific range from the runway and is indicated in the cockpit by a color light and Morse code. However, at many airports they have been replaced with low power. DME, and RNAV, with a GPS, capable of fixed identification. Outer marker are located 4 to 7 nautical miles from the runway threshold. It indicates the position at which the aircraft should intercept the glide slope at the appropriate interception altitude within plus minus 50 feet. A blue flashing light and a series of audible dashes at 400 Hz identify the outer marker on the marker beacon receiver in the cockpit. Middle marker are placed about 3,500 feet from the runway and at a height of about 200 feet above the touchdown zone elevation. Middle marker indicates the approximate point where the glide slope meets the decision height. It is identified by an amber light and an audible pattern of dot dash dot dash at 1,300 Hz. Inner marker is placed between the middle marker and runway threshold. It indicates the point where the glide slope meets the decision height on a CAT-2, ILS, approach. Inner marker is identified by a flashing white light and an audible series of dots at 3000 Hz.